All right, so let's try to find out how we can shorten the list of programs where we want to send our applications. So for international medical graduates, the first thing, of course, is visas. So is a program sponsoring J-1 or H-1B or not sponsoring visas? That's uh, one good place to start. Now, in general, um, if it's a program that's sponsoring H-1B, it's very likely also to sponsor a J-1 program. And, um, but not vice versa. That is, if a program is sponsoring J-1, they may or may not also uh, sponsor H-1B. So what you could do is um, certainly if you need a visa, I would just choose J-1 and then kind of use that to shorten my list uh, moving forward. After visas, then a lot of international medical graduates uh, look for programs that have taken other international medical graduates. Now, these uh, you know, online resources like Freda and Residency Explorer, they allow you to narrow down your list based on the number of international medical graduates in that program. So um, what is a good number that uh, one should be looking for? There is no magic number. Um, I would say a good start would be 10% international medical graduates in that residency program. So for example, if it's uh, you know, a, a program size um, where they take 20 uh, residents per year, you know, two IMGs, that's a good start. Um, you can kind of go up all the way you know, up to 33%, like a third or 50% if you wish, but um, you know, maybe starting 10% would be, would be a good number uh, to choose. Then um, other things about the program that you might want to look at is program size. So if it's a huge program, like you know, 40, 50 residents per year, um, you just want to figure out for yourself if that's a program where you're going to fit in. Some people do, some people don't. Um, certainly, I wanted to choose kind of a more of an average size program, like 20 residents per year just so that I could get to know my colleagues well and certainly um, know my attendings, uh, uh, you, know, and, uh, you know, especially that's important when you're starting to apply for fellowships and everything. So after uh, that, the third thing to look at is program location. Now, you know, realize that um, yes, you'll be spending your three, four, five years in residency training, but you need to have a life outside uh, the hospital. So uh, you know, make sure you also try to figure out which um, places uh, maybe you you don't want to be at. Uh, you know, so if it's a very uh, a place that has a crime uh, high crime rate, then um, might be best to avoid. Especially if you have family, uh, younger children, maybe you want to look at schools um, and get some more idea about that before you uh, you know um, make the move. I would say. So think about that, uh, program location is important. Um, for example, you could start just by focusing on the, uh, on the Northeast, the New England region, and then um, traditionally East Coast programs uh, have been you know, described as more IMG friendly, maybe some in the Midwest also. Um, those might be good starting places. Another way you can shorten your list of programs is by reaching out to alumni from your med school. You know, who are uh, try to reach out to those um, graduates from your med school who have uh, you know successfully matched at a program uh, of your that you're interested in. Also, you know if you can reach out to them, ask them where have they interviewed. You know if a program uh, takes in an applicant from a med school, it's very likely to do the same the next year and the, and the subsequent years, and so. Um, uh, so if you have someone from your med school at a certain program, I would highly, you know, encourage you uh, to look into that program to apply. And um, so that's uh, one strategy. Plus, also, if you can find out where all the interviewed, uh, then those are the programs that are likely to, you know, at least interview um, the graduates from your med school. And then also reach out to the folks, uh, you know, who helped you out with research or U.S. clinical experience. So if there was a certain hospital, a certain mentor who uh, gave you the letter of support, try to see if um, it would be worthwhile applying at those programs, just because, you know, there's going to be a little bit more familiarity uh, 
for uh, for that attending in that hospital. So, you know, if I'm a program director of a certain hospital and I receive a letter of support from my colleague who works at the same hospital, I, I'm surely think I'm going to take uh, take that a little bit more uh, strongly as a stronger recommendation. Um, lastly, you know, other ways to um, narrow down your list is to um, look at uh, the program websites, which is very, you know, it's a very time consuming, it's hard work. This year uh, for 2020, uh, 2021, a lot of programs are having open houses. So that's another great way for you to find out um, you know, see the program director, see the residents, try to figure out their interactions, ask questions if you wish. And that's another way of trying to understand if this is a program that really cares for you and cares for your well-being and uh, will help you in your uh, career. All right. So I hope that was helpful and all the best. And uh, keep watching uh, this YouTube channel for more information about uh, the whole residency process and uh, feel free to send me your questions and i'm very happy to help you out all the best